once again, I don't even really know what day it is, but really what it is, is it's our fourth episode of Pardon My French, and I couldn't be more delighted than to come to your living rooms again today. This process has been amazing. Thank you so much for your support. Today, we're going to learn about an ear-to-ear -ear guide. I'm going to talk to you about the measurements of an ear-to-ear -ear guide. I'm going to show you a little of how I work in my classroom so you can know more about when things ramp back up, about how you can get some hands-on education. But first, I want to reward our lucky winner and our winner today of, pardon me, our six inch shear is going to go to Haley Gregory of, of Deluxe on Depot. Haley is from Nashville, I believe, Tennessee, but she has posted every day, joined in, had some incredible posts. Now, you might have watched my Facebook Live earlier, and if you didn't, I want to tell you that today is actually going to be my final episode for a minute. Mm, I know. But, obviously, Georgia has been told that we can open up our salons on Friday. Now, um, before you give me any opinions on that, I want you to know that I am treading very lightly, but my salon family needs me right now. Now is the time for me to get back and focus on my business, focus in my business, and figure out how we plan to open our doors uh, in, the, in the future. And by saying that, I don't wanna leave you hanging. I know that there's going to be a lot of questions about square layers and some of the things that I haven't had an opportunity to cover. But what I will tell you today is I am giving you my Bali Mama promise that I will pop back on this digital age again soon. And we will have the fifth and sixth final episodes of Pardon My French. So please be patient with me as I navigate these uncharted territories. First, I also want to answer a question that I received from Amanda Brown in Michigan from Vision Salon, some of my students that are up there in the good state of Michigan. And one of the questions was from yesterday, do I always use reverse exterior all the way down when I'm doing a haircut? And that's an incredible question that I get all the time in my classroom and I wanna answer that for you today. The answer is no, I do not. When you're trying to put these layers on the top, as we have done before, sometimes based on the density of the hair, I will do a reverse exterior at three quarters of the eyebrow where we talked about here in our sectioning. I will go all the way through with reverse exterior to the parietal ridge. And then I will turn my body back and do a regular exterior to the bottom. That way what I'm doing is I'm allowing myself not to overlayer the bottom. However, there are certain instances that I do want to continue that reverse exterior all the way down, Amanda. And that is typically when I want to really create a more shaggy effect all the way through. So you must always be aware of the type of texture that your guest hair has and whether or not their texture can support that ruffling of the feathers. That was a really great question and I hope to uh, elaborate, that, uh, elaborate on that more if you come to my classroom. I also want to say that don't think just because today is my final episode for this week that I'm not going to give away a pair of shears for each and every one of you that post. I really have loved, it's given me so much light to see some of your creative ways in which you have posted online. I know that our winner today had uh, did some hair on a stand-up Dolly Parton. It was hysterical. Uh, but nonetheless, please make sure to hashtag cut, a French Cut with Candy. Make sure to tag at Sunlight's Balayage and make sure to post that on your live feed so that I can follow you. And I will promise that on Thursday morning, I will pop onto a Facebook Live with a few answered questions as well as the winner of today's episode. Also, tomorrow you may be interested in knowing that 11 o'clock I am going to be doing a webinar on a bit of the state of our industry for the ABS Chicago 
with Ronan uh, Enos. And I will actually post a link of how you can tune into her Facebook Live. I'm going to be talking about how to navigate these uncharted waters and how we're going to provide hope for each other through all of this. Now, I know there's a lot of great information out there, but if you are interested in tuning in tomorrow at 11 a.m., just pop on over to my Facebook and I'll make sure to give you the instructions of how to do just that. Quickly, I would like to go over a French cutting practice roadmap that we provide in our classroom and our academy. And this is just a way that we actually uh, practice each angle. So if you're out there and you're wondering, well, how am I really gonna get this rhythm, this body position, all these things that we've taught from hand position, scissor position, feet position, this is a wonderful roadmap that we use. I'm going to just pick this up. If you would care to try to take a screenshot of that, you could take a screenshot of me uh, showing you that roadmap. And also what you can do is see the actual angles here as well. So you could take a screenshot of that as how you can practice those angles. And I'm just going to quickly run through it so that you can Understand, if you are an educator out there, maybe your salon family wants to learn more about French cutting, this would be a way that you can take a mannequin head and actually practice each angle. Because I said before on my first episode, I don't teach haircuts, I teach hair cutting. And that's what's vastly different in French cutting is the way that you can approach hair differently. So it's super important to learn all the fundamentals of the roadmap. In other words, I want you to learn to walk before you run. Because once you've learned all of those hand positions, body positions, you can plug in any angle that you want to get the hair cut that you desire. So first what we do is we practice basic outlines, of course cutting over the top of the finger for anything over an inch, making sure that that hand is nice and straight and uh, the shear, which is beveled uh, and, and butterflied, is able to cut that basic outline very quickly. We then practice getting a guide in the top, which I showed you yesterday on my exterior angle. We practice how to actually get a guide through two fingers width two fingers depth in the top, and then we'll practice a bit of exterior angle. So three quarter of the eyebrow, just like we showed you here on the top four sections of your haircut, we will actually pull that up and practice those four sections. Then we'll drop down to the three sections that live on the side, and we'll practice the body position of that as well. Then we'll actually turn our body, remember the sprinkler head, where we're going to walk from the right and work to the left, and we will actually practice mesh a mesh in the crown. Now mesh a mesh in the crown, as you can imagine, if you're cutting a square line at the top, when that falls, it actually falls exterior, doesn't it? Because of the law of gravity. Then we'll also practice mesh and mesh in the back, which coincidentally is very hard because when you're at the back of the head, you typically always want to lean and go in. So we actually practice that body position of staying nice and square and straight to that haircut. After that, we'll practice from the occipital bone to the bottom, going in and diving for that interior angle. Now a note for you that could be very helpful about interior is the depth of your finger is going to determine the pitch of your haircut. So the deeper you go in and dive, the more you're going to angle that bob. And I'm getting ready to cut a bob full uh, on ear-to-ear uh, uh, -ear guide for you today and you'll really kind of get to see how my finger dictates the guide. Because remember, you're going to be working from the top down because that's how French cutting is done, so it's very different in how we don't work from the bottom up. The final piece that we practice is we practice reverse exterior. Now you remember that I said all I'm doing is I'm reversing my body around as I come around my mannequin or my model as I'm working in the salon. So when I am on this side, I'm actually facing the mirror in the opposite direction. Um, reverse exterior is a game changer. I know a lot of you posted yesterday how it's changed your life. I know it has because it certainly has changed mine. 
but I want to make sure that you realize that those fingers are straight up and down. They are not like this. If I'm cutting like this, I'm still cutting exterior. So that's what makes it so different, is the pitch of my finger allows me to go straight up. Now the more hair that I'm removing is based on whether I cut under my finger or over my finger. Think with me for a minute, if I have really long hair, then it's possible that I might need to cut under my finger and slide directly up. However, if I had a bob or something where I was just picking up and possibly dusting off the outside edge of that corner, then I might be cutting inside of my finger. So I hope I'm clarifying how I cut reverse exterior because yesterday I cut it under my finger for those reasons. Then, as we just talked about, our question from Amanda was, do I use reverse exterior on the side when I come out? Because we said we have a clock. That clock is 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. What am I doing at 1.30 and 2 and 10 o'clock and 11.30 on this side? Do I go straight up and then rotate out? Or do I go straight up and then rotate in the middle? And in that middle of that AB section is where I'm making that determination of the parietal ridge. Am I going to cut a corner? Am I going to build a corner? Am I going to leave the corner? Or am I going to remove the corner? And those are the things that make French haircutting take it from good to great. And so those are parts that I want to make sure to identify from you as to whether or not this angle drops straight out and I go ahead and cut that angle is totally determined by the density of the hair. Now let's get started on an ear-to-ear -ear guide short haircut. I want to explain to you where I get the measurements from and how with the roadmap of what we draw is important. So I went ahead and drew what an ear-to-ear -ear guide is and I want to try to explain this better. So basically what I'm trying to explain is how to cut this haircut and how this would be cut very quickly and very seamlessly in your salon by using an ear-to-ear -ear guide. So, first what I'm going to do, and you'll see the one here, is I'm going to cut a basic outline. Remember in our sectioning yesterday that we said we would take a section, one finger behind the ear. That's one finger behind the ear for my bob line. Think about it for a minute. I have a very square line bob. But if a woman wants that to her hair, it needs to be a little shorter behind the ear so that it supports that, that movement and graduation. And so first in the French cutting, I'm gonna cut straight up, straight down, straight back. Again, on this side, you'll see that my drawing indicates that this side of the hair is longer. So let me see, I'm trying to turn that for the camera. It's hard to hard to understand because this is all new to me. I'm backwards. I'm dyslexic. This is crazy. Uh, but nonetheless, so here we are. So you see the longer piece here. So that's drawn and indicated here in my longer piece. And then my shorter side, which is obviously I feel most bobs are have a tendency to always have a little bit of asymmetry in them unless they are a one bis, which is what my haircut is. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that line. It's always important in French cutting that we cut the sides of our short hair first. Unlike most that start in the back, we always start on the side. And that for me is because that is the focal point of my haircut. Now from there, I'm going to actually rotate out this pivot of this piece of hair, which is going to be the measurement from here to here, is going to rotate out. And you're gonna see me walk around the head perpendicular, straight out, using my arms straight like my airplane wings to create a guide first. Then I'm gonna take this guide and I'm gonna connect that down into my interior angle. And it's gonna kind of be a mind-blowing moment because I'm actually gonna create a line and then connect to that line, which is really kind of uh, a different approach as to how you might get there quicker. Then from that point, that line and guide is going to rotate up, allowing me to cut from short to long, meaning pushing everything forward like you see in a bob. I'm going to connect to the top. 
Then I'm going to use a high anterior in AB and I'm going to connect because as you can see, most bobs would look like a house if they were sucked all the way up like a floaty. Why? Because there's no layers in the top. We don't have a V going this way. That would be an exterior angle. We don't have a square box because a square box would be a different looking bob. So this bob will have a house and a pitch of a house simply because that hair, if this was sucked all the way up, would make a point in the middle. So once I've done two, I'll rotate to three. I will connect to the top. And then my final step will be just connecting to the interior at the bottom. And what you'll notice is when I go to cut that at the bottom, there's very little hair that's coming off. Now in French cutting, we always say that the basic outline is 75% of your haircut. It's the part that is the strength of your haircut, and then the layers are just the part that gives air to the hair. Let's get started cutting the basic outline now. So first is I'm going to take a part from the top of the head to one finger behind the ear. I'm going to pull my bob line down and I'm going to begin to cut over the top of my finger. And remember that as I'm doing so, I'm actually sawing that hair. The next thing, just like the drawing I showed you, is I'm just going to pull this hair straight down and I'm going to cut the V behind the ear. Now normally that's a very scary move for most people to feel like they have just cut away that type of hair. But the reality is this piece of hair right here is what's going to become my guide for my ear to ear guide. And you'll see me cut the rest of this off momentarily. Now again, we face the guest. So the guest here would be this way. My head would be turned this way. So for the benefit of the camera, I'm going to try to step over here and see if I can make sure that you can see how I'm actually doing this. I'm going to bring this hair down, making sure that my scissor and my finger are not rolled. That's so important not to roll hair when you're trying to cut a bob. So I always say the scissor is my pencil and the comb is my ruler. So now I'm going to draw my line straight on top of my finger like so. I'm going to come to the other side and connect from the back up. And again, I'm not worried about what's underneath because that's getting ready to come off anyway. So now I've actually created that bob line like we talked about, and I can take the shorter pieces here and connect to the back. So as I come into the back of the head, I'm going to drop my mannequin's head, I hope, <laughs> forward. And I'm going to drop her lightly forward so that I can get my entire hand in there. Now, when I do that, be thinking about whether or not you want a ton of pressure or tension on your haircut. So in this case, I'm actually going to hold my comb and freehand the bottom of this section. And you'll see that as I'm holding my comb, I'm actually holding that comb for stability. I am going to go back in and clean this as I come around. And don't forget that this wonderful Colette is yours truly for $23 and uh, they're going like hotcakes. So if you want one, I would highly recommend that you take a moment to jump online today and order those while supplies last and while we're honoring that price. But nonetheless, so what I've done now is I'm going to just check for the evenness. I'm going to pull down onto the skin now because I've removed all of that extra hair. And as I push into that hair, I'm going to just use my entire hand and my entire hand is going to push through and I'm going to clean that line. Now, for those of you who normally take your comb and comb this down and transfer your comb, you'll see why it's so important to learn the French comb positions because as I'm trying to cut, my comb is in the way. 
If you have a hard time holding your comb like I was trying to teach you in episode one, then what I would recommend for you is to hold your hand all the way down, hold your comb straight across like your ruler at the top, and that can draw the line for you. So if you can't hold that comb, you'll just come straight across like so, and using the bevel of that shear will help you in that process. Okay, so now let's get started on actually connecting the ear to ear guide. Now by taking that shorter point of the V, I'm actually going to comb this hair straight out and I'm going to walk around the head and this is the only time the palm of my hand is going to face me and I'm just literally skimming off the top of my haircut keeping my airplane wings out and I'm walking around step by step to the other side and I stop when I get to the V on the other side. So what I have done, and I apologize that this is a dark mannequin, but what I have done is I have now created a guide to connect to the bottom of my bob. And by creating that, by just walking around the head, pulling my comb straight out with each section and only scooping the pivot point of the crown and ending on the V on this side, I've now created the guide for the bottom. Now by using my eight inch comb, my favorite white comb, I'm going to connect all the way through using the new guide and creating the depth of my finger for my bob. So the depth of my finger, as I said before, is going to determine how deep my bob becomes. So the deeper my finger, the more uh, that this bob will stack up in the back. Okay, so I just connect. Now, the hardest part here is that as you're doing this, sometimes you're thinking about trying to get this basic outline in your hand. But remember, we talked about one, two, three, three, two, one in the back. And as we do that, what that means is we're traveling around that first section of this haircut. So I am not concerned with what is underneath at this point. I am just holding my body position, my hand position in the correct and proper way. I'm not touching anything on the sides. So I work from right to left, and then I go back, and I go a tiny bit deeper. And you can see that corner coming up each time as I go. And in many cases, I have to go, instead of two times around, I have to go three times around. And of course, in a mannequin situation here, because I don't have the neck and head shape of a regular customer or client in my chair, it is important that I go all the way down. So, as I continue, I'm using my interior angle. Now I'm gonna drop that head just a little more and I'm gonna really make sure that my hand hugs into the head. And for that, I'm gonna come down again. You should see a nice big corner coming off here. I'm gonna take my section. I'm going to pinch it, prepare it. Just keeping the side away, comb it and connect it. And pinch it, prepare it, comb it and connect it and pinch it, prepare it, comb it, and connect it, and pinch it, prepare it, comb it, 
connected. And each time as I begin to work around the head, my sections will come out. And as I get, I'm right-handed to the right side, I will begin to get my sections a slight bit more diagonal so that I can make sure that my body position stays the same, just as we spoke yesterday about the sprinkler head. Now, by doing so, I've now started to create the look of the bob in the back. I have left what is on the side and I'm beginning to see the shape in my bob. Now, of course, in the interest of time, I can come back and refine that with, uh, obviously, with um, my texturizing blade or anything of that nature. But once I begin to finish up the back, now I just come to the top, I cut from short to long, and I connect my bob. So let's do that next. So now I use two fingers width and two fingers depth. I comb this hair straight back. I find the middle of the part, meaning the part line of her hair is right in between my section. And I'm using the guide that I created from the ear to ear guide here. And the guide that I've created from the framing on the face. And all I do is I comb this hair straight up and I connect. And you'll see that there's not a whole lot to connect with the back and the front. As I've done that, I'm gonna comb that hair and reestablish my part. Now I have a guide on both sides of my part. And as I showed you in the drawing, I'm going to now use high interior. Now, I could choose to do exterior on the side. I could choose to do a mesh. I could choose to make it kick out or go in or whatever it is. That's the beauty of learning the angle. But in this case, I'm going to pinch at three quarter of the eyebrow, prepare, lock my comb in, comb that hair straight up and connect. That's one, pinch, prepare, comb, and that's two. And all I'm doing is connecting to that triangle in the middle, like the house that we talked about with a high interior. Pinch, prepare, comb, and three. And there is the angle of the house in the middle. And pinch, prepare, comb, and four. Now I'm gonna drop this back. I'm gonna turn my body, get everything organized for me to now address the crown. And as I address the crown, I'm going to pinch, prepare, comb. And you'll see that there's really not that much hair to connect, simply because we did an ear-to-ear -ear guide. So three, and four. So I've done my four sections across the crown that we talked about right here. Now I'm gonna turn my body with my back towards the mirror, but in the interest of the camera, I am now going to be turning this way. And as I'm coming through this part, I'm going to pinch, prepare, comb, and there's my guide. One, two, I connect. Saw with the scissor. Now remember that my scissors and cutting tools are 30% off with all of this pardon my French. Uh, so I hope you'll tune in and get some great shears so you can work really quick. Um, it's been amazing to offer that to each and every one of you to help you in this process. Again, here's my guide from the outside. And here's my guide on the inside. And I'm creating that house effect like we talked about. And lastly, pinch, prepare here, and here's where I'm gonna cut. Now, many of you are concerned about sometimes having holes on the sides of your bobs. So in this case, rather than me over-directing that hair back in a way, 
All I do is I hold that section where I need it to be and I tilt the chin up of my guest. And when I tilt that chin up, it automatically saves me from cutting a hole. So now I've done one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And now I'm gonna to connect to the side and the haircut will be complete. Now, in the salon, this haircut would take me no more than seven or eight minutes to cut. Um, for French hairdressing is very different as far as how we blow dry and how we style hair. I'm hoping that in our episodes to tune in in the next uh, few weeks that we can talk about the terminology of French blow drying. But now I'm just connecting, you see, and my last should be here, right where my V was, right behind the ear. I'm gonna comb that straight out. There's my V, there's my new guide. Now I'm going to connect. And again, remembering that my knee is around. Now, if you feel more comfortable taking one more trip around the part, the hair party, you can go right ahead and just for the purposes of making sure that your tension is there, you can go through the back one more time. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really all depends on how I feel about my tension. We all know that there are days that we are a little bit lazier in our body position. So if I felt like my body position was lazy, I would go back through. And the final piece is the connection of the smaller side. And again, I will take right where that one finger behind the ear, where that V was, I will comb this hair straight out. I will connect from the basic outline to the new guy, and I will cut my V using three sections. One, and two, and my final section, making sure I'm standing up nice and straight, is three. By doing so, I've now completed my haircut. Now I could go in and obviously work this hair with point cutting and lots of other things. There's nothing stopping me from being creative and doing different things with this haircut. Um, in this case, uh, as I said on the drawing, um, and I might have mentioned, maybe I did not, but I could cut the C on the small side and by cutting the C on the small side, when she would go to tuck that hair back, it would be a lot easier for her to tuck that hair back. But I think it's really interesting to see that the law of gravity works every time. Just by plugging in those angles, doing an ear-to-ear -ear guide, you get the before and the after. Whoops, sisters from another mister. And by doing so, you still get that seamless, soft French layer every time. So, when you order your shears today, let me show you something great that's gonna come along with it. And that is this wonderful Le Coupe bag. Oops, can you see it? Le Coupe. This great Le Coupe bag is gonna come when you order your shears today or your curl up mannequins. So I hope you've enjoyed how to cut a ear to ear guide on your bobs. This is a very, very easy way of you using and utilizing the French cutting technique. I hate leaving you. I hate saying goodbye. I do hate goodbyes. But be on the lookout for me posting some links of when we're going to start back up in the classroom and finish the series of Pardon My French. Don't forget to hashtag French Cut with Candy. And while you're out there, remember to say a prayer for all of us here in Georgia as we're trying to navigate this uncharted territory and what we are uh, about to embark on. It's been such a pleasure to be in the classroom with you. Don't forget, I'm always out there, whether pandemic or not. The Bali Lama is always here to teach you anything and everything. I have loved and enjoyed sharing my gifts with you. You guys have a fantastic day.